Good afternoon, everybody. It is Friday, November 6th. We are having some big difficulties with the uh, TV channel. I apologize. Hopefully you can still tune in on the radio or stream online. Um, what was meant to be a very general update has quickly changed into something else. So I'll let Premier and Dr. Patterson get right to it, speaking about Nunavut's first confirmed case. Um, then we'll go straight into questions. Minister of Education Juanasi is here if you have any questions about that, as is Minister Hicks, who is here in his last capacity as Minister of Health before the shuffle next week. Um, also, we will go with one question, one follow-up, and we'll cycle through to make sure everybody gets their chance. Thanks so much. Minister Hicks, King Tanaka <laughs> วัดชาวดาวตูพาร์ทเซนอุนิกาเรนเนี่ยมาตะตะกว่าฮูเกียนเนี่ยละมังอาตาเทกว่านุบันนาวยาอ่าตัวเวนนาตูติงเกตัย
But as you now, now know, we have a confirmed case of COVID-19 in Sanikiloa. This is Nunavut's first confirmed case. On behalf of the government of Nunavut, I am sending best wishes to the patient, their family, and the whole community, and your thoughts, and, and you are in our thoughts, and we are here to help. Nunavut now has one confirmed case of COVID-19. The total number of persons that have been followed to date is 3,803, and there are 583 persons continually being followed. Dr. Patterson will speak shortly about what we know so far and next steps in tracing and contacting the spread of this virus. Nunavut Mute, please remember a confirmed case in the community is not a reason to panic. Continue to practice social and physical distancing, wash your hands, and stay home if you're feeling unwell. Please limit your contact with others. This is not a time for blame or shame. Please do not spread rumors or misinformation. This serves no purpose and helps absolutely no one. And thank you all for continuing to the dedication to follow our public health measures. To everyone doing their part, keep it up. As we head into the dark season and staying inside more often, we need to stay more focused and tentative than ever. Please stay, stay well, stay healthy, and stay safe. And remember, your actions is affects everyone's health and to the people of Sanikilaw. Please don't start rumors or spread misinformation. Get the proper information from the public, the chief public health officer or the government of Nunavut's update. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon. Today we received uh, confirmatory results of a positive case of COVID-19 in Senekilowak. The individual and family are isolated. We have initiated contact tracing in the community and our rapid response team is on standby to help manage the situation should it become necessary. <laughs> Effective noon today, all travel to and from the Belcher Islands, including the hamlet of Santa Kilowak, by any means is restricted. There are exceptions for emergency medical travel, critical entry for medical response, flight emergencies, and cargo. Hunters may also leave the community but may not travel to any other community or populated, pardon me, populated area outside the Belcher Islands. It is also advised, advised that hunters leaving the community closely monitor themselves for symptoms and return home if any develop. all for-profit and not-for-profit businesses in Santa Kilowak must close, with the exception of grocery stores, fuel and motor vehicle service stations, Canada Post, financial institutions, and restaurants open for takeout service may remain open under strict rules, including all customers must remain two meters apart, and there can be no more than 10 people permitted in the lineup for service at one time. In addition, 
all schools, including the Nunavut Arctic College, federal, territorial, and municipal government offices must close to all but essential work. all public gatherings are res restricted to five people and there should be no gatherings in homes. Currently, the common travel areas between uh, Nunavut and the Northwest Territories and Churchill, Manitoba are still open for travel from other communities. And I want to reassure Nunavumia that we are re responding quickly to this case and to remind them that now is a time for support, kindness and understanding. Thank you. Is that it for statements? Yeah. Okay. Can't just go to the National News. Uh, Dr. Patterson, your language that you use, you called it a confirmed case. I'm wondering if you could explain what you mean, what would be the difference between a confirmed case and a possible case, and when was the original test for COVID-19 given? Uh, the sample was collected this week, Monday or Tuesday, if I remember correctly, and the swab, the sample was processed at the National Microbiology Lab in Winnipeg because Sandy Kilowack is on a very different path, flight path from the rest of Nunavut. Their samples go direct to the uh, to Winnipeg and are processed there. We got those results back today, so it's been tested by the gold standard in the country, and it's a confirmed uh, positive. That plus the symptoms makes us um, pretty certain that it's it's a definite thing. <laughs> In the previous cases that we've had at the mines, you describe, your office describes it as low risk of transmission to the communities. How would you describe the risk of transmission within Santa Kilowatt right now? It, it would be above low, right? It's possible that it is, and so out of an abundance of caution, we're reacting as if it is to, you know, going to the extreme of the public health orders to uh, restrict activities and, and limit the ability of uh, the virus to spread, at least until we know more and can carry out um, at least the initial contact tracing. 
Jackie McKay, CBC, Kumnita, Napa Kuti, Yutsau Yaraloa, Anna Hamnang Pilla, Inu, Ilina to Lay Kuministering Anut, Takum, Ilina be Matuya to Lugita, Mahanu to get hooked in at Ilina to Lerina Munganing at Hana Matuya Ningat Nalanipa. Yes, that's correct, stage four. A Hutinilim, Sitamang and Pimarioning at Aqua Matuya Lakayo. We've been hearing of exemptions for medical travelers uh, who haven't had to isolate coming back to the territory. Can you confirm if medical travelers coming back to the territory are required to isolate for two weeks? To Sarsima Gatatako, Anna Bilasma, Makoni Pinasa, Rosin, Nino, The majority of medical travelers are required to isolate for two weeks after they're done, but there have been some who have been granted exemptions for other reasons. And just to clarify, when we say they're exempted, we mean they, they don't for whatever reason, they're not isolating at the hubs, but when they come home, they're still expected to isolate at home. Matisavi, Radio Canada. Um, what exactly is the rapid response team made of, and are you expecting uh, new cases to be declared in the upcoming days? Matisavi, Radio Canada. Kurnita kwa tawag natulig ko kikikun nila kaya wakat amalo ni reupias ng ni nubanjuan ng tato ka kan ng nang nang ni. The rapid response team is a group of nurses, uh, public health nurses with training in uh, contact tracing and some extra training in COVID-19. Um, their job is to go in and help out with the contact tracing. Um, and they have one person usually goes with them to provide uh, IT support to set up computers and network access. And uh, they, may not be needed in Santa Kilowack right now. There's some extra staff already on the ground for preparing to move into the new health center. So we have a rapid response team identified and on standby, but we have not decided to send them in yet. If the contact tracing work is too big or there are more cases in the next day or two, then we may send them in to help out. There's nothing, nothing right now that we're expecting, but it's an infectious disease that, that is easily spreads from person to person, so it certainly wouldn't surprise me if there's more cases. Um, but right now, there's no evidence of spread within the community itself. Um, 
Given the increasing amount of cases in Manitoba, would you connect the, this one case in Santa Kilowatt to, to that? Or? What's your name? Uh, Trevor, right? Trevor, right? No, I would need good name. It's too early to attribute it to or, or link it with what's going on in Manitoba or anywhere else at this point, and, and I don't want to speculate and contribute to the rumor mill. There's already been notes about uh, charters and exempted workers and concerns like that, and I understand everybody's concerned, but at the same time, we need to... First off, we need to make sure we've got complete information before we make links like that. And secondly, I don't want to contribute to the r rumor mill or the blame game. So we'll give that information as soon as we can, but we have to be certain first. Um, excuse me. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Uh, is there any, um, you, you're talking a lot about rumors and stuff, uh, are, are you guys already seeing any of the impacts of, of the um, discussion around avoiding rumors and whatnot here? Or? I'm not, I'm not sure what you mean, oh, sorry. Uh, the, um, uh, you guys were talking a lot about avoiding spreading rumors, or, or, or are there, is there any specific link to that, or is it just you just want to avoid a lot of discussion around that, though. Sure. Yes, yeah. Suling it to me, how is it to me? 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 How is it yeah, we do. It It isn't helpful and it takes away from the major concern of, of breaking transmission and, and protecting Nunavumiut. And um, every time this happens, everybody jumps to, uh, not everybody, uh, sorry, that's incorrect on my part, but, but there is that um, tendency for some to jump to uh, making guesses about where it came from, how it got into the community, and, and I understand the curiosity, but let's get full information before we make uh, statements like that it came in on a charter or things like that. <laughs> Dustin Paterno, that's good news. Are you able to say how it got to the community? Dustin Paterno, no, not say I couldn't. Oh, how not care? How no, no, not no, no, manga. No. Aga. And for the contract tracing, do you have a timeline on how long, roughly, that you expect that to take? It's already started. Um, as far as how long it takes, it depends on um, how many people are involved, like uh, the number of people that have to be interviewed. Um, my understanding is that uh, this individual went into isolation when the symptoms developed and has been following those guidelines while we uh, while they were waiting for the test results so that's promising but it's still too soon to say how long it's going to take 
I'm a trend to the Canadian press for Sunny Kilowack residents who are in isolation in one of the hubs down south right now. Are they able to return to the community? I'm a trend to the Canadian press for Sunny Kilowack residents who are in isolation in one of the hubs down south right now. Are they able to return to the community? I'm a trend to the Canadian press for Sunny Kilowack residents who are in isolation there was a scheduled, there was a flight uh, scheduled for Sunday. That's been postponed for now. Um, we need to make sure that there's, we need to identify whether or not there's transmission in the community before we let more people come home and expose them to risk. <coughs> Is the person who tested positive a Sunny Kilowack resident? I don't want to discuss any details because it's a very small community and it would be easy to slip up and give identifying information away. Kent Driscoll, APTN National News. Uh, the previous false positive in Pond Inlet, you were able to give us some basic information, gender, age. I'm wondering specifically, can you tell us the patient's gender, their approximate age, and their recent travel history? Not at this time. But in the previous case in Pond Inlet, you would provide some of that information, but this time you won't. I'm wondering what's the difference? Uh, I made a mistake in Pond Inlet and provided more information than was needed and that allowed some people to identify who the individual was in Pond Inlet and I'd rather not repeat that mistake. Jackie McKay, CBC News. A lot of people on the Facebook feed are feeling confused about the five person rule um, for the people in Sandy Kilowatt watching. Uh, can you explain more about the five person rule and the difference between? the five people in, on top of your household. Oops. Jackie McKay, CBC, Facebook, House Hartu Marula Nata, Nalulum Narasu Titako, Talimogum Narasu Gitako, Atog, and your house Hakanum Nahi, and your Kamio Hatigi Hakaning, I go Talimani Pulato Gunoto. The public gathering part refers to like when you're out walking around, and the problem when we when we first wrote the rules back in, or the orders back in February or March, when we said no public gatherings, technically if two people walk down the street side by side, that's breaking that rule. So we had to create that number to let, you know, a husband and wife walk together to the store or something like that. <laughs> How does this impact the rest of the territory? Are we still abiding by the current um, restrictions in the rest of the territory? Uh, 
That's correct. The orders don't change for any other community in Nunavut right now. News. Uh, how long are these closures um, slated to happen or go on for? I guess. Does the Patano not say I could make Hanutigita or Matuya Simani Hanutigi Langaban? Don't know yet. It we're taking it day by day as we work through the contact tracing and see if we can identify other cases and if there's evidence of community of spread in the community outside of the household then we'll keep those measures in place for now as the contact tracing progresses, this gives us the opportunity to limit the spread. And once we are certain that we've got the, con the individuals and the contacts uh, with them and got everybody under isolation, then we can look at easing the measures, which could be um, in as little as a couple of days or it could take longer than that. So that's easing the measures. What circumstances would force you to increase the measures? Uh, there's not a lot of room to move to make the measures more severe, so I can't really foresee that happening right now. How many other people related to this case have been tested for COVID-19? I don't know at this point. Um, the, the staff in Sandy Kilowack have started testing other people and started doing the contact tracing, but I had to uh, leave our first um, meeting to discuss those details to come here, so we'll find out in the next day or two. You said the individual is symptomatic. Can you describe the severity of the symptoms? Mild. Yeah, just, I think it was fever, cough, and a headache was the initial uh, symptoms on presentation. Trevor with Nunavut News again. Um, I may have missed this, but um, are people are, are masks mandatory now in Santa Kilowack? Or? Yeah, if they're going, people are going indoors, they should be using masks. And I think it's in the orders. Yeah. Uh, are people elsewhere in the, I guess it's just Santa Kilowack. That's correct. We're not changing the orders for any other community. You forgot me again. Oh, I'm sorry. Sunny Kilometer, I may be over. Sunny Kilometer, I'm at our summer galley. Mamiana. 
uh, Ken Driscoll, APTN National News. Uh, Dr. Patterson, on one hand, you and the Premier both stressed that people shouldn't be spreading rumors. But on the other hand, you're providing no information about the patient. Rumors come up when there's a vacuum of information. Wouldn't releasing more information help your goal of reducing the rumor mongering around this? Ken Driscoll, APTN, Kunik Luta, Patterson, Elite, Civil Tillo, Uhaus Haina, Titana, Suling it to New House, Hatahunasi, Taima, Tamako, Suling it to Sakilo, Hatangata, to Samang it to the Sumali to Sama teaching Ilo Akitama to Mamitsan. It would help with the rumor mongering, but it would aggravate the blame game, and uh, it would be. It is really easy in a small community to give what seems like innocuous information and people who are familiar with the community will be able to identify uh, certain individuals from just a small, like two or three pieces of information. And I've learned the hard way that um, that does a lot of harm, can do a lot of harm to those individuals. And um, so we're not going down that road again. I'll explain a bit more in a second. Dan elit si mayo at so ng nagtukuro tigi kay na lao kaluwas niyo kamaluan ng kuta ng nagmatat so mga nuvajua ng taas si mami jumbo tay may matay ma tay may ako sa katandang ina may luling ina nalo na si kuti ng nagtuni kina mga it's an infectious disease and you know it's pretty easy to spread so everybody's going to be concerned and and many people will be concerned and many people will be wondering and wanting to know and I understand that. But on the other hand, the individuals with infectious disease, in this case, one individual, still has a right to privacy, still has, I still have an obligation to protect their privacy and their personal information. And so I've got to balance that. And um, we, we know enough about it to believe that we can manage the risk as it is in that divulging further information to uh, in a public forum like this is not going to help us in managing that risk. So having learned um, a valuable lesson from Pond Inlet, we're gonna be, I will be stricter about maintaining that confidentiality. Takwangila Tana Sam Masum Masam Masarit Gunna to Palo Luni Taman Nesama Logia Galo Ami Sundu Takwalo how you magumagaya to Galo at Kisani Tana Naluna Tos Mayo Atosi to Luni Mano Ya Pion now to Hanga Suli Luling in Nikanguna to Tinu House U Tailiga Hanging Anu Tana Losapu Miss Magia Hanga Tatsuma Inu Sing at Amichano Wayuni Takonalu Nalimugi to Chiga Hanga Kisani Mana Hoy Matsang at Amana the individual who tested positive, um, had they recently come back to the community through an isolation hub? Jackie McKay, Tana, CBC, Kunik, Aperilanga, Kiruja, Yutsang, Takalo, Kisani, Tana, Nalunatos, Mayu, Tikirata, Dominuva, Halunani, Nutu, Vugali, Mika, and Nakdominu Luni. We're not discussing any details at this point. Mano, you're living in your house, a giant Um, Jackie McKay. We've heard that uh, people from uh, the community have come to a Kaluit for medical travel this week. Can you confirm if um, members of Sandy Kilowak have are coming to a Kaluit for medical travel, and um, if so, is there a risk to a Kaluit? 
Tu sais, c'est que je suis un homme qui a été 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 un It would depend on the date they left and where they were, and we will track them down through the contact tracing. If there is somebody in Nakalawit or any other community who's from Sinakilawak and they're concerned, they can either call our uh, COVID hotline or call their local uh, health, call the health center wherever they are and seek advice that way. Ilangi <laughs> Mathis Harvey, Radio Canada. QEC sent some employees in uh, San Kilwak recently. Um, they were there three days ago and now they're back in Iqaluit. Would you say that there's there was a risk of transmission at some point? And now that they're here, is there a risk for the good for Iqaluit? Mathis Harvey, Radio Canada. It depends in part on where they were and what they were doing. Uh, again, my advice to anybody who was in Santa Kilowack in the last week or so, um, go home, call the local health center, call the uh, COVID hotline for Nunavut, and we'll work with them to figure out what to do from there. There's some, uh, there's been some non-medical masks distributed in a few communities in the Kivalik region recently as far as uh, medical masks or other forms of PPE, not at this point. that the schools in San Nicola will be at stage four. Can you confirm if students will be learning from home? What kind of how will that plan be rolled out? I'm a trainer, Canadian Press Kunita, and I live in the Lerigi Communist Sanga Napa Rigo Mayo. Lalona Tosimayo Halak Tilugo San Nicola, Midana, Lomatu Yosima, and Hutin, and Sitamanga Nati Lugo, Tako, Nabi, Matu Yosima Mataila, Tako, and coming Nail in Nartago Nanaka. November <laughs> The initial digital devices will be sent out to Sanikiluak. Uh, we're aiming for Tuesday, uh, November 10th. And we have laptops and iPads. Uh, some devices, the laptops for high school students will be internet, will have internet capacity. Uh, we are waiting on shipments for uh, internet sticks for uh, the iPads, but uh, 
The SP platform, the remote learning platform that we announced, uh, will be uh, getting the, that set up for the teachers to uh, implement uh, as soon as practicable. And <clears throat> we anticipate that this, this is going to be an adjustment for sure, but uh, we, we ask that uh, patience and we ask for patience from parents and the community as we adjust from uh, stage one to four. Sorry, we have just gone over some transcripts of all the press updates and it doesn't look like Dr. Patterson actually disclosed any personal information at any point. I do remember at the time there was some community or some personal information that had been uh, disclosed over community radio and social media that went widespread, but I just wanted to clarify it doesn't look like it came from Dr. Patterson at all. Uh, thanks, everyone. I just wanted to, again, just re-emphasize how important it is uh, to take care of one another. Uh, there's been some questions on concerns of community spread, and it just goes to show how important the measures that we've put into place on the social distancing and the, and the hand hygiene and making sure the gatherings are kept to limited households. Yeah, how important it is for all of us all across the territory to continue practicing the measures so that if COVID-19 does come into a community, it can be contained. <laughs> And just on a personal note, Ms. McLeod mentioned that uh, this is my one of my last uh, duties as the Health Minister for Nunavut. I want to thank uh, the members of the media, obviously the Premier's office, uh, for working with uh, the, through these press conferences to make sure that Nunavut are kept informed of uh, different things as they arise, and just the just the updates so that people keep informed of what progress is being made and what concerns that have to be addressed. So I just want to take the time to thank everyone out there for continuing to do the work, but I would like to uh, put some special recognition to the media that helps bring those messages out into the public. And of course, Uli, uh, with the incredible interpretation services that have been provided to make sure that that message gets out to all of our population. So thank you. And just in closing, I know uh, Minister Kusagak has been involved in this file from his community government services portfolio uh, from the get-go in a lot of the logistical planning. Uh, so I fully uh, have in t full confidence that he's going to be able to walk into this file with uh, uh, with ease and uh, and already being up to date. And just like to take a moment, I know it's a day early, but happy birthday. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>